G'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, and today we're going to do a nice, simple night sky with mist and a moon and some stars in there, okay? So let's get this on the easel. So let's put our board on the easel and go through the paint colours and brushes we're going to use, okay? Right, the paints we used was titanium white, black, dioxine purple, and phthalo blue. And the brushes we used today was my two-inch branding brush, my hard hog bristled fan brush and that little flathead brush. You're going to need a sponge, a cutout for your moon, and of course I use retarder in this procedure. All right, I've got me white here. I'm just dabbing it into the brush. I'll put a bit of retarder in it because I want to blend some beautiful colours into the sky. And we'll paint this board up white. Okay, now we're going to go with our well, dark colours, which is dioxine purple. I'll get that, and I might have to mix a bit of black with it, okay? So we'll see how we go on here. We want all this side here, dioxine purple, pretty much. What I'll do is I'll paint the section in dioxine purple that I want, and I can always blend some black in it if I need to, okay? Just like so. Now I want to blend this. I'll grab my blending brush and blend it. See everything has retarder in there. So naturally it's going to blend good. I just want to blend that nice and softly on the edges to break it into that white. That's virtually our dioxine. Next colour we're going to put on here is phthalo blue with some retarder. Okay, so our phthalo blue is going to be all here. Get it on, bring it to the purple. Get down there, Steve! Grab our blending brush and blend that into the dioxine purple. So they merge together nice and softly. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm feeling the heat right now. Blend this right across into there. Now see this blue, this depth of blue we have here? It's going to be lit up with some moonlight, so we don't want it that dark there. So what I'm going to do while I'm blending it into this dioxine, I just want to move these colours into that dioxine a bit more, just so they're really, they're bleeding, they're bleeding for each other. Dioxine wants phalo and phalo wants dioxine and they're bleeding for each other so they come to Ian and go, get us together man. I'm getting them together. I'm putting them together, they're right in there. Their DNA's mixed all over the place. Now here is a bit darky blue. I'm just going to grab some white and maybe do that. I don't know what you call that method, but we'll just call it splatting it. And then blend this just to lighten that blue up some more with some textured, marbly tones unevenly through it. So it looks like it's got depth and character. You see what I've done there with the blue? That's how I want it. I'll grab my fan brush to put more in there because I really want more in it. Maybe some can go in the purple. I've got to lighten it up with some, you know like the misty sort of stuff I do? That sort of stuff. Get it right in there and get your crap happening. Get some more in there. Probably that's nice there. Maybe some around here. Now that's pretty much it. Okay, we've got dioxine purple and the sexy phalo blue. Phalo blue. Together. They bled together for each other and they got each other. Now the main thing in this phalo blue I wanted to create was this toned, 
I don't know if you call it marbly or rough blending, but see how the blue's got all those white cloudy bits in it? Now we've got to blend this phalo a bit darker on the edges, okay? Now I'm going to get some of my black with retarder in there. Just chisel it onto the fan brush. And we want to get some this. So I'm going to start in the corners. And you can see the way I'm going to tone that into the dioxine. And I might have to come back with dioxine to um, tone that in a bit more even, see how it looks. Because we don't want this looking too starky black. So we'll get this sort of like so. Always bang your brush a bit after you've done some blending if you're doing this style. See how the white went all uneven and marbly in different depths. That's how I want this black to react, but you've got to be careful. The black can be very domineering. I will get the dioxine, I think, and go over this black just to get rid of the blacky blackness of it all. But I still need some, <clears throat> maybe them corners can be dark. And we're just teasing it all together. This is a real basic painting for anybody to do. And then we'll get the dioxine again. It's got the acrylic in there, not the acrylic, the retarder. And we're going to put this back through the black and blend it just so it's softening the harsh blackness we've put in there. It doesn't look so kindergarten style, you know. Blend it. Oh, that's lovely. That's what I'm after. Beautiful. I'm going to show you this in a minute, a bit closer, and you'll see what I mean. But we've got that dark space type of sky happening with the dioxine, the blacks, and the blues. It's created that effect that I'm looking for, and hopefully the effect you're looking for. I tell you what, if the painting you're doing is not the effect you found and it's not what you're looking for, just put it aside, make yourself a cup of tea, relax, look and think at your work, and start again. Because sometimes you can be in it, and you're going, oh, it's not working, it's not working, and you're still putting other paints on your brush from your palette and trying to get it into your canvas, and it's still not working. You need to step away from the procedure, and take five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, and get yourself back into the mode to know what you're going to do. You've got to drag yourself from it, okay? So we're going to get a bit of phalo blue. Let's hope I don't wreck this. I want some darkness here, merging into the dioxine and the, the black there. Yeah, see? It's important that you know what effect you're going for. So at the end of the painting, and people look at it, they go, they know what you've done. Where if you sort of leave it baby powdery colours and don't put that extra effort into it, it sort of loses that wow factor, it loses that bullshit effect. You want to keep that bullshit effect in your, in your work. I'll show you what I mean later on with that again as well because people need to learn that they can add such great effects to their paintings and people are just amazed at it. Become at one with your work, I'm telling you right now. And man, I am stuffing hot in here, eh? It's bloody hot as hell. See what we've done with the, the dioxine and the black? It was important to get all those tones like that, okay? Because that is the main painting. Okay, here comes that bullshit effect again. Grab yourself a pad, a bit of dry paper. I've grabbed some paint on this brush that I'm going to use. But look how much is on there. I don't want that. So what I do, 
So I've got something in my hand. I'm wiping it off virtually, stabbing it, smashing it, and knocking the shit out of the top of that brush again, all right? So it's pretty, pretty much dry. Look at that. There's bugger all on it. And we want to go for where's our little dark seasons here, sessions here. There's a bit there. Just find some dark bits and add. I'll show you in a minute. Add some glary attention to it. Put it on, wipe the hell out of your brush and blend that in. Blend it into the, the sky there, whatever. Now if this smears it's still too much, which it's not, it's not too bad, it's alright, but if it did I would have grabbed another brush to blend it. See that little detail I just did in that purple there? Because this is the main painting, I'm telling you right now. You can even grab your fan brush, use that to transfer where you want your little white details. Don't overdo it. Put it on like that. Here, come in and have a closer look, you bastards. Right? Get this brush and blend it. It's very subtle, very, very subtle. But it's what's going to make up what we're looking for in the painting. I'm going to wipe it again. My little blending brush, my little brush I'm using to blend it. And look for those whispery blended out features and some little, little darker tones there that make it look good as well. Because I'm telling you now, if you can bloody hear me, this is our painting, nothing else. We're not stuffing around with nothing else. Now see how that looks like glare coming from behind? But it's not glare because this is up in space, remember? But it's creating that look to give it that art effect that you want. Now I want to get some, I've got some phalo blue on me brush. I want to sort of bring that in a bit more. I'll clean that little brush that I was using for blending it just so as I can push that where I want and then I'll get my big blending brush. See that's wet. It's sort of it's all right though, it'll 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 survive. And we'll blend that into everything, getting those edges nice and bloody soft, eh? You want them bloody soft. Well, we're gonna put some stars in the sky. Now, you don't just use any brush for this. I'm using a fan brush, and the paint is very watered down. But you need these bristles to be firm, hog bristle ones, not soft ones. If they're not firm, it won't hold the strength to flick the paint onto the canvas, okay? So make sure you got the right one. I'm gonna practice down there. Okay, fine. And now we want to try and get some on the board. Do it from a distance so you don't get any big, stupid, ridiculous ones like that one right there, you bastard. Doesn't matter, it's only an art piece. And because the Milky Way is the Milky Way, we can sort of <clears throat> create a, a thicker band somewhere just a thicker band coming there. You know, more concentrated stars. And you can see all the stars now. Okay, what I've got to do now is dry that and we'll put a moon in there. We'll say hello to Sally Wilson and Ann Keel, Con Connie Culp, Julie Crane. So I'd like to say hello to a few friends out there, ones that I can remember. Now, we'll dry this, and then we'll incorporate a moon, and then once the moon's on there, all we've got to do is push that moon back like it's a mongrel, and you don't want nothing to do with it. We're going to push it back, and what we're going to use to push it back is a bit of space mist. It'll sit it there, and it'll be pushed back, and it'll look like a piece of art that's supposed to look great, okay? Determine the size of your moon. I want mine about this big, okay? And I want to put it about here in the picture. Okay, 
just tack it on lightly like so. Grab your sponge again, wet the bastard, a bit of your white paint, get that paint moistened up a bit. Hang on, I've got a bit of a, there we go. Now let's get this moon on there. This is going to be a solid full moon. Okay, now I want to get a bit of dark colour on there. Wet the sponge, get some black and turn it into... I don't want too much black in it though. See what I've done with that black? Okay, I've done that. Now I'm going to wipe the sponge. This is just what I'm going to do. Wipe the sponge. Or even if you had another sponge. Actually, I've got another one here. Grab another sponge. Smear that into the white. Okay, that's good enough. Go back to your white. Get that white on there. I'll get my head out of the way. See, this white's pretty thick now. But follow the shape of your moon. So the edge of it's really reasonably white. If you feel you need some more black in it in places, stab it on and finish it off in the white. To me, that'll do it. I'll just soften that a bit. Looks a bit crazy. Your moon can always be detailed with a brush later on. So now we'll sit that moon back with some mist smoke. Now I've just got the very smallest of paint on this little brush again and I've wiped it off and I'm smearing. See how, how lightly I'm doing that? I'm coming in front of the moon. I'm sinking it back into the, the night sky there, making pillows of like uh, misty clouds in front of the moon. Once you spray varnish on it, it glasses the painting up a bit, makes it look bloody beautiful, eh? Don't want to virtually go too far out into the black areas though. That's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it. Our night sky space sky for the moon, okay? Hope you liked that video. Please share, like and subscribe my videos to everybody. And if you like it, tell a friend. If you don't, tell everybody, okay? All the best to you. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.